Hello and welcome back to the Serverless Hub. I hope you are well and staying safe. I am your host Nisal Vikramage. You can follow me on LinkedIn and GitHub. In this video, we will be discussing on how to use Azure Bicep to automate your infrastructure deployments for Azure Functions. Before we get into the demonstration, let's understand why we need Azure Bicep or infrastructure as code in general. Let's first consider a simple analogy. Before the digital era, when we need to check in with our loved ones, we used to write letters. Since it's only one letter, we would write it by hand. We can take all the time we need. This approach was suitable for one letter. But when you want to send invites to 500 people, you cannot afford the time to write each one by hand. For this, we will create a template and print the invitations. Similarly, when we are provisioning cloud resources, it's okay to do it on the web console for one time. But when your cloud environment is complex, you cannot afford the time to provision them manually. You need a way to automate them. Infrastructure as code came to the picture as a result of an attempt to automate the infrastructure provisioning. Wikipedia definition for the infrastructure as code goes like this. Infrastructure as code is a process of managing and provisioning computer data centers through machine readable definition files rather than physical hardware configuration or interactive configuration tools. Main advantages of coding our infrastructure is speed, consistency, accountability and the ability to source control the definitions. Cloud formation Azure Resource Manager templates are infrastructure as code solutions from AWS and Azure respectively. Terraform is another major player in the cloud infrastructure as code space. Terraform provides more advanced features and can be used to provision both AWS and Azure resources. Azure Bicep is the new kid in the town. It builds on top of Azure Resource Manager templates, but it's very convenient compared to the former. Azure Bicep ecosystem consists of CLI to provision the infrastructure and Visual Studio Code extension to assist the coding. Now that we have an understanding of the context, let's get hands on. First, let's install Bicep CLI. Bicep CLI depends on Azure CLI. So if you don't have it already, install Azure CLI first. We can install it with Homebrew on Mac. For Windows, we can use the installer MSI file. Once Azure CLI is installed, you can type in AZ Bicep install to install Bicep. Mine is already installed, so I will switch to Visual Studio Code. Then let's install VS Code extension for Bicep. This will help us with IntelliSense. Once it's installed, let's write our first Bicep file. Create a new file, call it main.bicep. We will do something simple first. Let's create a storage account. In Bicep, we have resource keyword. You guessed it right to define Azure resources. Then we give it a name. This is not the name of the storage account in Azure. This is like a variable name. After the resource name, then we need to specify the type of resource and the version. As we discussed earlier, Azure Bicep uses Azure Resource Manager under the hood. In Azure Resource Manager, resources are versioned. That's why we need to specify the version. Then depending on the resource, we need to set the properties. For storage account, it's going to be name, location, kind and SKU. You can choose a name of your choice in compliance with Azure naming constraints. We will get the location from the resource group that we will later deploy this resource to. Bicep has some built-in functions and properties to help us with important settings and operations. Once the code is in place, let's deploy the code. Let's open the terminal or the command prompt if you're on Windows. Let's type in AZ deployment group create hyphen hyphen resource group shdev. This is the resource group. And finally the parameter template file. We will mention our bicep file main.bicep. Please remember, if you are using PowerShell, the commands will differ. It will take a minute or two to complete the deployment. Note that we are passing the resource group as the scope for the deployment. Similarly, we can use management groups, subscriptions and tenants as scope. Once the deployment is complete, you can go to the Azure portal and verify the deployment. As you can see, the storage account is created.
Next, we are going to see how to parameterize this file. Because we cannot edit our bicep file every time we need to change our storage account name. Bicep helps us with providing parameters for this. Let's parameterize storage account name. Let's declare a parameter storage account name. We will assign a default value. Let's type in a different name from the last time. Let's try to deploy again. Once the command completes, let's confirm the deployment on the portal. We have a second storage account in the portal. The value we assign to the storage account name is just a default name. We can pass in the value when we are executing the deployment command. Let's see how to do that. We will use the same command az deployment group create resource group sshdev template file main.bicep. We will add one more argument which is parameters. We will give the name storage account name and the value. Let's run the command. Let's wait for the command to complete. Let's verify the deployment on the portal. Ok, we have a new storage account. We can go another step forward. We can move the parameters to a parameter file. This is very helpful when we need to manage multiple instances of the same environment like dev, testing, staging and production. Parameter file is a JSON file. Let's create storage.param.json. I'll copy in the format of the JSON file. JSON file should follow this schema. Under the parameter section, we can provide the parameter values. We will add one parameter, storage account name, and the value ssdevtest0022. Let's save the file. Let's go back to the terminal. We can pass in the parameter file name in the command. Instead of passing parameters argument inline values, let's pass in the JSON file name. Let's deploy it. Once the deployment is complete, let's verify the storage account in the portal. We can see another storage account created. Now let's see how we can create multiple storage accounts from the same definition. We will change the parameter type to array. We will no longer provide the default value. Let's change the code to use the array parameter values. In Bicep, we have for loop for this particular requirement. Code will look like this when we modify it to loop through the parameter values. Let's update the parameters file as well. Again, let's deploy the bicep file. Deployment is completed. Let's verify it on portal. We can see two new storage accounts created. One last detail I want to highlight about parameters is parameter decorations. 
Decorators will help us enforce constraints and provide metadata about parameters. We will look at couple of examples. A description decorator will help us provide metadata about the parameter. At min length, at max length, will help us constrain the parameter values. There are many more decorators, but I will not go into details. One last concept I want to highlight is outputs in Bicep. Once you deploy Bicep code, if you need to get some property values from the deployed resource, you need to go to the Azure portal. This is okay for one or two resources, but for more complex environments, this is cumbersome. To overcome this, we can use output keyword. Output helps us read required properties from CLI itself. Let's update the main Bicep file to output blob endpoints of the storage account. Main Bicep file creates multiple storage accounts. So the output will have multiple values as well. So let's take that into account here. Let's deploy. Once the deployment is completed, let's read the outputs. Let's use this command. AC deployment group show resource group sshdev name main queries properties.outputs.endpoints.value. As you can see, it will display the blob endpoints. This video is not a complete bicep guide in any means. If you like to learn more about bicep language, please refer the official documentation. I will leave a link in the description. What we discussed is very little about bicep, but what we discussed is enough for us to understand bicep file to provision our Azure functions. Now that we know how to use bicep, let's see what resources are required for the web API setup. We need a function app, app service plan, storage account, and a Cosmos DB account. For this setup, I am going to copy a bunch of code and then explain important facts. Doing this from scratch will take a long time. First, we have some parameters for the resource names and function app SKU. Then we have resources for Cosmos DB account, SQL DB, to do items collection. Next, we have resources for function app, hosting plan, and the storage account. Storage account will be used to store function app code. Finally, we cross reference resources properties to set connection strings in function app, for example, db connection. Let's deploy the bicep file. This will take some time. Once the deployment is complete, let's go to the Azure portal and verify. We can see all the required resources. Let's verify the Cosmos DB connection string in the function app. It is already configured. Important fact to note is Bicep file will only provision the resources. It will not create any functions in the function app. To verify the setup, let's deploy the function app. I will be using the code from my previous video series, Building Web APIs with Azure Functions. Once the code is deployed, let's validate the functions. I will ping the API endpoints and see if everything is working together. As you can see, 
It's creating new to-do items and it can fetch all the to-do items. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave a comment or send an email to theserverlesshub at gmail.com. If you like this video, please like and share. And also please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe.